Hey, good evening everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Saturday Night Ranked Racing. Uh, this is going to feature 60 minutes of FR2 action at the Hungaro Ring. Uh, you're pretty much seeing a uh, an early glimpse of how the F1 race will be tomorrow at the Hungaro Ring. But, uh, yeah welcome welcome to youtube we're here we're trying to be live we're gonna see how this works uh it's set up right now for uh five five forty p so um it won't look that great live but uh this is also being recorded as i speak in 1080p 60 frames per second all of its glory looks looks pretty good uh so this will go up as a recording um at a later you know tomorrow so, if you're watching it now, um, don't worry. You know, just watch it to uh, hang out here with me, um, and to uh, watch hopefully some uh, glorious racing. Uh, we've got a lot of. Uh, let's see how many people we have right now. We've got a total of nine people already, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, hopefully, we see a little bit more. We got a couple. Uh, we've got two Australians in there, um, some Americans, a Brazilian. We've got a French, a Frenchman has now come in. Um, if you're seeing the uh, the tags on the uh, on the bottom right there, so uh, DDF, uh, Daniel D. Finney, um, the mo uh, the uh, popular streamer from Australia. Uh, you may have seen him seen some of his stuff before. If you haven't, hey, check out uh, check on his page here on YouTube. Um, it's great stuff. If you check his page out right now, he's gonna have his point of view. Uh, of this race, he does it in VR. It's it's it's, uh, it's so fun to watch. I, I can't I can't express um, how fun it is to uh, to watch his stuff. But uh, you know, put us up on the split screen if you want to. Two windows, you'll see his point of view. You'll see the, the broadcast here. Um, you'll have the best of both worlds uh, of everything. But uh, uh, he. Uh, has and he has the time to uh, to jump in here with us this this uh, this evening, um, so that's that's awesome stuff. Um, it's always fun when uh, when we have some folks that uh, don't normally are able to get out uh, to race with the North America Race Room Discord community. Uh, it's fun to have them uh, get out here and race with us. Um, part of me wishes that I was uh, able to uh, race in this this evening, but um, I've been away from the house all day. I have not practiced. I have not really uh, messed with this uh, combination, so I figured, hey, you know what? I'll uh, I'll just commentate this evening. Uh, spend this uh, spend this time with with you all here, whoever might be here, and uh, you know, call it a night. I'll, I'll probably have more fun here than I would uh, on track at the moment. So, uh, yeah, uh, as always. Um, I see some folks in the chat already. Welcome, welcome to uh, Zoltan, uh, Grimy Dog. Welcome, guys. Uh, hopefully the stream looks okay. Uh, from your point of view, from your perspective, there. I hope it does. Uh, it's probably about going to be the best it gets. Uh, so hopefully my, uh, my bit rate holds up. Hopefully the uh, it won't be uh, that great a quality here uh, live, but it'll be uh, pretty good quality when it gets uploaded. 
uh, through the night into tomorrow. So <clears throat> it should be fun stuff. But uh, as always, uh, if you're here on YouTube now, uh, we're obviously live. So uh, make sure to uh, like this video, put a like on it. Um, go back if you if you want to look at the other videos. Put some likes on those comments. Make sure to subscribe to this this channel. Uh, make sure to uh, set up your notifications. Um, as always, if we're if we're here live on YouTube or if we're live over on Twitch, uh, all videos get uploaded to the YouTube page. Um, they're always uploaded in 1080p, 60 frames per second. So they look a lot better than what the normal live streams do. So if you catch a live stream and it doesn't look that great, don't worry catch the replay when it goes up it'll look even better um, clip it share it send it do whatever you want um, it's basically free reign to do whatever you want to do with the uh, with the videos um, but uh, if you're here on YouTube right now you know uh, visit the, the, the twitch uh, page as well uh, North America race room um, nine times out of ten that's where we put up a live stream uh, only because it's, it's kind of easier to do. It, it it handles a little bit better than YouTube, for me at least, uh, to do it. So, um, But in the end, like I said, any video or any live stream we, we do goes up on YouTube. That way we can showcase the community members. Um, we can highlight um, you know, good driving, safe driving, clean driving, uh, awesome driving. Uh, by all by all of uh, us sim racers that uh, that do this, so uh, that's kind of that. Um, if you're just joining, um, this is going to be the the fr fr2 class at the Hungaro ring. Um, I can only imagine what this is going to be for those folks that are out there. Um, it's probably going to be a lot of, as we've seen already in the stream here, uh, a little bit uh, spinning. I see Don Dussel. Good, uh, good uh, morning, probably to you, Dom. Whatever time it might be there in the the old country of UK. Uh, but as I was saying, the FR2 class. Um, I don't know if I've actually driven the FR2 class, or if I have, I've just messed around with them. But uh, like a lot of the open wheelers. Um, if you get too much on the throttle, out of a out of a corner, uh, you're probably going to spin. You kind of have to um, just flow through a corner with speed, and then come out of it, and then hit your throttle to uh, to progress forward. So uh, we're going to see how these folks do in here this evening. How many do we have? We've got we've got 13 people as of right now. I, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good number. Um, this is a tough class of car, honestly. Uh, really, all the open wheelers. If you're not very good with them, um, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long time, or not a long time, but it's going to be a uh, a long session for you if you're not that good with open wheelers. Um, not that they're especially hard to drive, but really, you have to be really easy with the throttle at times. Or if you're not, then you go spinning around. So it is what it is. Um, it takes a special person to do these very well. But uh, yeah, as of right now, what uh, DDF is a, a 132.5. He has about a two-second lead over Mr. Ainsbury at P2. So uh, this might be the DDF show tonight. Um, but. Uh, since I'll have control of the uh, broadcast, we'll, you know, we'll certainly cycle around to everyone. As I said, uh, DDF probably has, most likely has, 99% I'm sure of, has his stream up and going of his point of view uh, of this race. So if you want to put it side by side to get a broadcast uh, view of it and a uh, point of view from his from his perspective, um, certainly do that. Uh, like his stuff, you know. If you haven't watched his stuff, or if you're not really familiar with his stuff, I, I suggest you watch it. It's it's great content. Um, 
you know all the uh, videos or all the races that he does with the, uh, the Australian New Zealand uh, community there. They go through Tuesday Thunders. Uh, I think that right now they've got uh, an endurance uh, series going on. Uh, they do great stuff. So, and I think he's involved with most of that. So, watch his stuff, like it, and go from there. Um, so, what we have? We got eight minutes of practice left. Um, six people have set a time. I'm looking at the software. We still have 13 folks in there, so we've got some people still out there. Um, let's let's stay with Luke Filipona here. I think he's coming to the end. Yes, he's very close to the end of his lap. Just to see where he does. And then what we'll do real fast is we will then show you a uh, circuit layout. And then we'll show you an in-car lap of one of these folks out there. Because I did not have time to put one myself. What did Luke do? Luke did about 4.7 seconds slower than uh, VDF, so about, about 137, I think that's what I said. 137.2, so. Uh, DDF is uh, definitely... Uh, right now, one and a half seconds ahead of Theo Luther in P2, so kind of has uh, uh, head and shoulders above the field at the moment, but there's still some time left in practice, and you have qualifying to kind of uh, tune stuff in, so you might see the, see the top times uh, get a little bit closer as we get closer to uh, race time. But uh, as I said, after watching Oscar Fielding, another one of the uh, Australian New Zealand uh, sim racers. Uh, welcome, Grammy. Better to, better for me to spectate uh, myself as well. This is why I'm doing this. I would probably attempt this uh, race, but uh, not really in the state of mind to try to do this. So I'll sit here with you all, uh, have a little fun, chat, watch some good hopefully some good racing so welcome to uh, to anyone and everyone uh, watching at the moment it's very much appreciated that you're here make sure to uh, put a like on this if you like what you see if you don't like what you see then uh, put a thumbs down it all works in the end it all achieves the uh, the goal of uh, Google um but Let's do this. Let's do a little track layout. I think we got a little music behind it too. I'm kind of making things crazy. But as you can see, the Hungaro ring we got 14 turns. Uh, after the start finish line, you have a uh, very long straight, which goes down to a, a pretty tight turn one. Uh, if you've driven the Hungaro ring, uh, it's very, pretty much tight. It's going to require you to get on the brakes. Kind of heavily. And then you'll feed down into turn two, which is kind of a sweeping left. Uh, which then turns into a turn three, which you can pretty much take full out. There's really no reason to uh, to stop, or not to stop, but to hit the brakes. Um, you then have an another very long straight up to turn four, which from my recollection, you do have to get on the brakes a little bit. Um, it's, it's more of a left-handed turn than what you think. Um, which then feeds you into turn 5, which is a sweeping right-hander uh, into the chicane of 6 and 7. So then feeds you down into... Uh, it feels like a chicane when you're doing it. It's, it's obviously a lot longer. Uh, not as tight as a normal chicane, but 8 and 9 will we'll feed you into 10, which then feeds you into a right-hander of 11, all the way down to 12. And then that's where things get a little bit crazy is after you hit the, uh, the right-hander the 90 degree right hander of 12 uh, that then feeds you into a uh, very tight sweeping left of 13 into a tight sweeping right of 14 and back around across the line so uh, as of right now you know like I said at times 132.5 and that's kind of ranging from 132.5 all the way up to 138 139 so you know times are uh, uh, pretty wide pretty spread out through one, you know, through P1 through 11 at the moment, so. 
now that we've gotten through that, hopefully you enjoyed that. I know I did. Um, where is... I think this is Mr. Innsbury. Perfect timing. We're going to follow Mr. Innsbury here. If he continues all the way on a lap. So here's what I was saying. So you pass it to the start finish line. Coming down to turn one. That you have to get on the brakes pretty hard. And that feeds you through there. This is going to feed you down to turn two. Right here. That was turn three, which, like I said, you don't really have to get on the brakes whatsoever. You can just flow right through that. Uh, three into four, which it varies on car how much you have to get on the brake. These you may not have to get on the brake very hard whatsoever. That was five. And then it's going to get you into six and seven. With the tight chicane, you can take a little bit of the inside on each of the curbs. It's then we'll feed you into eight and nine, which pretty much like a chicane, just, a, just an extra long chicane really, uh, into 10, I think that was 10, or 11, or the other, but here's your tight, very tight right hander, 90 degree angle, very close, and this is going to feed you into 13, just around this way, to the left, and then, turn 14, and then back across the finish line. So there's your in-car lap, sponsored by Theodore Innsbruck. He's going to put in a time of 134.3. So after that, let's move back to the auto director. Let's get a flow through, and uh, I will be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Dom Bezel, livid. I'm back, Mr. Dom. Looks like we have another a new P1 here. Someone has knocked off. Wait, oh, because we're unqualifying. Stupid me. That's what happens when I've been outside all day. In the sun. Having beverages. I don't know what's going on. But Matthew Tate here. Uh, a name I have not really seen uh, before, so I'm not really sure <clears throat> where he might be coming from, but uh, he must be first out on the track and seems to be putting in the first valid lap. We're going to see what he gets to. Uh, what was DDF was about 132.5. He is going to be about a 135, 136, a 138. 138 Diego 137.3 so there's your uh, P1 right now I'm back Dom I'm back I'm not the legend at all but thank you for that hopefully the stream looks okay for everyone out there auto director is just doing its work at the moment I'm not touching a thing uh, Luke Filippone is your new P1? 130? Oh, just like that, he gets knocked off. Uh, Dilupu, 133.5. Um, DDF will be coming up here very soon. He is flowing through the extra long chicane, as I like to call it. He has purpled Sector 1. Purpled Sector 2. And I am very certain he'll probably purple Sector 3 and probably uh, jump up back into P1. <clears throat> like he was in practice. I feel like I need a drink. I feel like I need a water. I might grab one here soon. But I'll do it quickly. That way Dom does not get upset. But uh, DDF coming around. Turn 14. He's hit the straight at 130. I think the line's what? About right there. 133.3. So, real, so super close to Theolupu. That is not where they were in practice time. So they're, they are uh, slightly closer here in qualifying. In what? Six minutes left. Like a 10 minute qualifying? A person with more information would know this. But I don't have much information. I'm just, uh, I'm just rolling with it. But thank you all for joining who might be out there at the moment. Uh, make sure to uh, like like this video. Follow this channel. Theolupu goes back to P1. He is pushing DDF to the limits. Dom's crying. Not really sure why Dom's crying. Hopefully he's crying out of laughter, not sadness. I couldn't handle it. If Dom's crying out of sadness. Here's a Spaniard. Marcos. Bromejo. Bromejo. No, I can't do that. I said that. What's he? He's, uh. He's done some personal bests through Sector 1 and 2. So certainly not purple. Purple would be session bests. Which would be faster than either Theo or DDF. But he's at least fast for himself. Coming through turn 14. Across the line. And he's going to end up 134. 134.8. Which is best for third. So kudos to him. One, one name I have not seen. And let's see where he is. Oh, here, there he is. Theodore Innsbury. Must have just gotten out there, so he has yet to uh, put in a valid lap. It's good to see, still see him there. We have 13 people at the moment in the server. With this being a ranked server, uh, no one else can join, so we are at 13. Or less, if, uh, if we see some folks disconnect or jump out or basically just quit um, within these last four minutes. A decent number. A decent number for the for the combination. I would say. FR2 Hungaro Ring. Uh, any open wheeler proves to be a little bit difficult. Um, for anyone, for everyone. We're 
see where Theodore ends up here. He's at a green first sector. Personal best. He's at a green sector two. It's eight. He's eight tenths off the pace, seven tenths off the pace, sectors one and two. So we'll see what he does here through sector three. Let's see where he ends up. Coming around 13, coming around 14. There's the pit entrance. I'm going to assume, well, I shouldn't assume. I'm not sure what pit strategy will be for this evening. Uh, we might see some pits. Then again, we might not. So Mr. Innsbury comes in at P4. 1.2 seconds off the top spot currently being held by Theo Lupu go back to auto director see who's out there uh, so DDF I don't know what happened in sector 1 not showing up but he's crippled sector 2 a complete second faster in sector 2 um, I can only assume he's going to end up yes Yes, and so that is almost like practice. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry about the phone. Uh, so DDF comes in at a 131.6. That is quick. coming through and around he's gonna end up with probably a 139 ish a 140.6 so he's gonna be about eight seconds off the pace um, but I mean you can't really you never know with these open wheelers uh, especially for 60 minutes um, so even if you qualify in the back uh, there's always a chance to move up um, with people you know, just losing it, going into a wall, having issues, whatever. Um, so you're really not out of it at any point. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I guess if you're lapped multiple times or whatnot. But uh, in the end, there's always a chance for an open wheeler to go crazy and to just go completely out of it um, and allow you back in the race, back in the game. qualifying p1 as it was in practice uh ddf daniel d Fenny, a 130.9 uh theo lupu coming in p2 with a 133.4 theodore insbury 133.7 one name or one person that dropped so now we're down to 11 so all 11 you see there are all that's left in the server um Rangy Rover, he was he was present for a bit. Uh, he must have dropped out at some point. Uh, and a few others, but uh, we have 11, and uh, I can only say this is going to be a tough task uh, for these racers. So while this gets ready to go, I'm going to go get a drink of water or get a water. I'll be right back. I should be back hopefully right before this thing starts.
just in time. Here we go. Lights will be going out here very soon. And wow. We had some issues off the line there. It looks like potentially DDF may have disconnected as he's currently 11th and he, he might be gone. Andy Morehouse must have started from the pit lane and is now has a drive through penalty for speeding. So right now, Mr. Theolupu is out in first place with who's that right behind him? A Tomas. Tomas Univert. Zoltan, I did not kick DDF. That may, must have been a uh, the infamous ranked servers must be coming into play uh, kicking people because it looks like DDF is gone. Maybe um, Thomas Cowart as well. Which is really unfortunate for both of them and really for the whole server. Uh, it's never fun to see people get kicked due to either server issues or ping issues or, or whatnot, but we have a fantastic battle here for P1 as uh, Tomas Univert is trying to get around Theo Lupu as they come down the straight into turn number one, and uh, Tomas has gotten around Theo Lupu, makes his way into P1, Theo Lupu into P2, Bermejo is in P3 with Theodore Innsbury in P4. And yes, oh, let's see, there goes someone sliding around sideways. Uh, Tomas Univert, just like that, as I said, problems can happen. So Theolupu moves back to P1, Bermejo P2, Theodore Innsbury P3. We're looking at Matthew Tate here, working on the Diego. Mr. Diego as they come through uh, the chicane of 6 and 7, I think. Yeah, then through 8 and 9, and down to 10. So the timing screen here, see where anyone is. We're on Matthew. Theodore Innsbury's working on uh, Marcus uh, Bermejo uh, for P2. as it moves back to uh, Matthew Tate, P6, working on uh, Mr. Diego. Uh, let's see, Emery Anderson's back in P7, about 13 seconds behind P6. And uh, Andy Morehouse is back in P8, which is about 13, 19 seconds behind P number seven. So those two are lagging behind just a little bit, but as you can see, DDF is out. Thomas Cowart is out, and uh, Tomas, who had that spin there in turn number three, is also out. Marcus Bermejo has had an issue, and he's in P4, now being hounded for P5 and P6 of uh, Diego and Matthew Tate. Uh, they will hound him with his slight off. Um, but it looks like Romejo has gotten back into P4. Uh, Theolupu currently has a 2.2 second lead on Theodore Innsbury. Those two have over a 2 second lead. No, no, I'm sorry. They have about a 5.5 second lead over Luke and Phil Pone in P3. Auto direct units. It's going to follow Matthew T for a bit.
and it seems that the uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we have here. We'll cycle through the through the field. Um, we have Mr. Lupu up here in P1. Um, his best lap so far is a 135.06, and he has about 2.2 second lead on Mr. Innsbury that you saw, just saw come through uh, the screen at the very top there. So all he's trying to do right now is just to stay consistent, uh, stay clean, and obviously not have that car look the other way or turn around backwards at any point um, to maintain his lead. Uh, we're going to jump to P number two with Theodore Innsbury. Like I said, he's about 2.4, 2.2 seconds behind Mr. Lupu in P number one. Uh, so, I mean, these two are going to try to just keep it clean. Like I said, uh, try to increase their lead. Um, not from, not between each other, but also in P3, which you see at the very back of the street. Uh, from Mr. Inver Insbury here, which is uh, Luke Filipone, which is being hounded at the moment by uh, Marcos Bermejo. Um, so these two are going to be fighting all the way through. Looks like uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe a little ping issue, perhaps, with uh, Marcos. This is kind of uh, wiggling all over the place there. These two are very close. They are the closest of, to uh, to each other on the track at the moment. I think Marcos is really just trying to push uh, Luke uh, to, to the limit. Try to have him make a mistake. Not that we'll see one, but... Uh, He's just trying to do whatever he can to try to get by. Romeo has gotten around Theo Lupu for P3. So these two will continue to do battle here. Let's jump back to Matthew Tate and Diego. Uh, Matthew Tate was fairly close. Just had a little somewhere. Put him back about a second. Five seconds now behind Marcos Bermejo and B3. So now we are all stretched out in what we have. We are just 10 minutes into this race. Just under 10 minutes. Um, done, basically. 49, 45 to go. And we have what? A two second lead from first to second. Uh, from second to third, you have about a nine second gap. From third to fourth, you have about 2.2 seconds. 
from the fourth to the fifth, you have about 3.8 to 4 seconds. From 5 to 6, you've got 10 seconds. And then from there, from 6 to 7, you have 23 seconds. And from 7 to 8, you have 55 seconds. Um, so everyone is on the lead lap. Um, everyone. Let's see. Nine, or no, eight out of the nine cars that were actually on track to start um, and began the race. Eight of them are still left. So we're going to cross fingers that all eight um, are still there in 48 minutes' time. As always. Uh, for anyone who might be here watching this live with me, slowly talking through all of it, uh, I appreciate it. The North America Race Room Discord community appreciates it. If you find it in your heart to like this video, please do so. If you find it in your heart to like any of our other videos that we've done of streams in the past, feel free to do that. Um, since this is recording and streaming at the same time, if you're watching this at a later time, thank you for watching. Make sure to hit a like. Who was that spinning around? That was Emery Anderson with a slight spin. Um, does not lose any positions as he was uh, pretty far back from P6 and pretty far ahead from P8. So uh, nothing lost there other than just time. Uh, there's Marcos Bermejo. He looks like he's gotten to the wall. Uh, so Luke Filippone has gone by. He's moved to fourth, and he now has uh, Matthew Tate uh, coming up there through eight and nine. So Matthew Tate's going to try to close the gap uh, as fast as he can to uh, try to pick up a position there. At this point in the race, that's kind of good. That's, that's, Kind of what it's going to be uh, coming down to. I don't know about pit strategies. Um, I do. There's. I don't believe there's a mandatory pit stop. Um, actually, you know what? Let me look. Look right now. And I'll tell you. Okay. There is a mandatory pit stop. So at some point during this race, uh, 15 minutes in to 15 minutes to go. In that window, you have to make a pit stop. You have to change at least two tires. So at some point, these eight racers will be coming into the pits, either changing two tires or changing all the tires, adding fuel, doing whatever, but they have to come in, which is going to play, obviously, some kind of point. And there goes Marcos Bermejo once again into the wall uh, around turn three or turn four. Uh, so it looks like he probably has some issues with his car, um, either to the aerodynamics or the suspension, um, which is probably affecting the steering of that car. It's going to make it really tough. Um, so he has to wait about a minute for the pit window to open, um, unless he wants to stop twice to have repairs done and then have his pit stop uh, be done and what should happen it's been a while since I've done this what should happen is once the pit window opens we should see new icons come about over in the standings um, little circles that will turn that will start out to, to be gray and then once someone's come in for a pit stop they'll turn green uh, to signify that their mandatory pit stop has been completed so Another thing to keep an eye on as we go through this. And there you go. So the pit window is now open. The pit window will stay open for 30 minutes. So these folks now have 30 minutes to do a pit stop. And as you can see on the standings, you now have new icons to the far right, which are all grayed out. 
when a pit stop happens and when it's uh, you know when when they do what they need to do, which is at least change two tires. Those are turn to green. Uh, Diego here. Look at this. So Diego has come in and ha has already done his pit stop. Uh, we will see. I mean, we'll see if if he can do 44 minutes on the tires he has, unless he's going to come in again. Who knows? I, I don't know. Um, but uh, if he doesn't want to stop again, he's done his pit stop, and he's okay. So that he took care of his. And look at this. Um, Theodore Innsbury has made up uh, quite a gap and is now about six tenths behind Theolupu in P1. So we're going to stay right here uh, for a bit. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move to the cockpit. Man, I'll be honest with you. I love the cockpit views. I don't know what the dash looks like. The dash looks like that. I don't like that. Even the cockpit view. I love this view right here. You can see, obviously, all the views everything going so you can see what Theodore is doing obviously within his sim rig on the other side uh, it also gives you a great view within an open wheeler of all the elements around him the car in front to the left to the right everything else so we're going to stay right here for just a bit to uh, see how the gap may either increase or decrease and we're going to see what happens
closer. Is what? Under one, under one second at the moment. We'll come back across the front of line. Down to team, uh, turn one. Continue to go onward, take over P1, and continue on his way. So we're going to see what uh, Fiolupu here comes up with. Uh, with about 37 minutes to go in the race, he takes his mandatory pit. He's going to go up. That's all four wheels. He's down. And he's on his way. So he will fall only to P2. So with that, Mr. Lupu has completed his uh, pit stop. He's still about six seconds ahead of Luke Filippone. He is 24 seconds behind uh, Theodore Ensbury in P1. And that, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if that covers the pit stop. So we will focus on uh, Mr. Ensbury here at the moment to see if he takes his pit stop now or when he does. Um, to then um, see the time uh, between his pit stop and uh, Theolupu coming um, basically from behind. But uh, Theodore Ensbury continues on, so no pit as of this lap. We'll cycle through, so as we were talking about, Theolupu uh, has, uh, has done his pit stop. So he may potentially be fine for the rest of the uh, race to uh, finish it. Uh, sitting in P2, about 24 seconds behind uh, Theodore Ensbury in P1. Um, about 7 seconds behind P2 is Luke Filippone in P3. Uh, as you can see, he has not done his mandatory pit stop as of yet. So we will certainly keep an eye out for when he will decide to do that. Uh, five. About 5.86 seconds behind Luke Filippone, you have uh, Matthew Tate in P4. Uh, once again, he has not done his mandatory pit stop. So, as like uh, Luke and Theodore Innsbury, we're, we're, we're going to keep an eye for uh, when people decide to do their uh, pit stops, just to see how that plays into uh, the strategy, but then also the outcome of the race. Um, 41 seconds back from Matthew Tate, you have uh, Diego... Uh, Junes, maybe, I just call him Mr. Diego, uh, he is 41 seconds back, uh, he has done his pit stop, uh, so realistically he should be okay until the end, but then again, uh, who knows, so we'll certainly keep an eye on that, but uh, he's 41 seconds back in P5 from P4, uh, we've had one person drop out, another one, so Marcus Bermejo, 
has uh, dropped out. Whether that was due to damage or just wanting to you know, drop out or damage or whatnot or disconnect or whatever, he's now in the pits for good. Moving on uh, from Diego, we have Emory Anderson, uh, about 44 seconds back from P5, sitting in P6. Uh, Emory has done his pit stop, so we'll see where it all shakes out once everyone has gotten through to their pits. Uh, and then finally, uh, back from Emory Anderson, you've got Andy Morehouse in P7. Uh, has not done his pit stop, so we will see when he does, uh, what he does. And, uh, like the others, how that kind of alters perhaps the running order. Switch it back to Auto Director. He's going to find uh, Mr. Theodore Insbury in P1. Here we go. The Theodore Innsbury in P1 is coming into his pit. Uh, we're going to see the time and the standings start to shrink between he and Fialupu in P2. If I could do a side by side screen, I would. So here's Theodore Fialupu all the way back. So Mr. Innsbury goes up for maybe only two tires. But Fialupu has gotten back in front. Mr. Innsbury is on his way out. And is going to be about... 7... About 8 seconds behind uh, Fialupu and P2. So there's already one shakeup uh, from the pit stop. And uh, only three others have yet to pit. Luke Filippone here, which is only now about three and a half seconds behind Theodore Innsbury in P2. Uh, Matthew Tate and Andy Morehouse. I'm going to let do its thing with uh, Theo Lupu in P1. So with uh, Theo being almost nine seconds out in front, let's see what else may be going on out there. Who's close? Uh, Theodore Ensbury is about 9.4 seconds behind in P2. You can see Luke Filippone there within the within the window, within the screen. Um, so he's he's within viewing distance of Theodore Ensbury in front of him. 4.4 seconds back in the P3. Uh, further back than that, about 7 seconds, Matthew Tate in P4. Yet to do a pit stop. Uh, there's about 15 minutes left in the, in the pit window. Side, 
without issue. And that'll allow uh, Theodore Hansberry to make his way through 13 and 14. To back to start finish line. He's now about 10 seconds, 11 seconds behind the field. Filippone making his way into the pits uh, has lost a spot to Matthew Tate in P3. Looks like maybe only front front wheels going up, going down, and he's out the way. So he will drop only one spot uh, to Matthew Tate. He will be. About 18 seconds behind Matthew Tate and P3, so that should be enough. Uh, that should be enough to gain that spot back once Matthew Tate um, comes in for a pit stop. Unfortunately, the what seven racers still out there are very, they're very spread out. Uh, so there's, there's no, there's no real battles at the moment. At the moment, which is why the auto director is kind of focusing on uh, the Lupa there for a bit. But here you go. So Matthew Tate is in for his pit person to have a pit stop. Uh, you saw Luke Filippone get by. And regain his position in P3, which has then put uh, Matthew Tate about 16 seconds behind uh, here, uh, Luke here in P3 uh, in P4. So we're once again back to double digit uh, gaps between all positions uh, so everyone's very far spread out uh, so then that comes down to my apologies I think I'm coughing up a lung but <clears throat> as I was going to say uh, that basically means folks are racing themselves racing the track racing the car uh, so they're really just doing whatever they can do to uh, not have any problems they're not cause any problems
I don't have viewers. Sorry about that. I walked away from them. But um, as of uh, coming back, it looks like we still have Thilupu in P1, Theodore Insbury P2, Luke Filippone P3, Matthew Tate P4. Where we have about 10 second gap between Thilupu and Theodore Insbury. And then about a 39 second gap between Theodore Insbury and Luke Filippone for your podium positions. Seven racers left out of the 11 who finished qualifying. Uh, I believe we only had nine officially start the race. I believe uh, Thomas Cowart and uh, Daniel D. Fenny, DDF, I believe they uh, were disconnected between qualifying and the race. Looks to be 100% damage and officially out of the race, unfortunately. So we're now down to six racers. And what I'm going to do here, just to add a little spice to this, is uh, I'm going to actually jump into the uh, voice channel. So you'll hear some other voices um, than mine. <clears throat> not that I'm not uh, interesting, which I'm probably not at the moment, but... Uh more commentary, more shenanigans. Always, Grammy. Always. Well, let's... Jump in here. Just to see what we what we might hear uh, within the uh, voice channel. Try, I'll try not to cut anyone off. Uh, if I hear some talking, or if we all hear some talking, I will just uh, stop talking for a bit. Directors. This is Diego. This is Diego and Emory Anderson uh, fighting for position of P5 and P6. Um, so these two are definitely the closest um, position wise to each other on, on the track and the closest battle at the moment. So we will uh, we'll keep it right here for the time being to see how this shakes out. Thank you, Grammy. I try. Well, yes, try. I try to keep it interesting, um, even when I don't have much to add or say uh, through a stream or a video. But I always enjoy everyone uh, coming out for these, whether we're on Twitch or on YouTube. Um, and really just for the fact of uh, we're able to show, showcase, highlight, you know, people within our uh, community, uh, as we do on Monday nights, Wednesday nights, Saturday nights, Friday nights. Any any night we have a race, uh, we'll do a stream, we'll do a recording, we'll throw it up somewhere, and uh, you know, hopefully people enjoy them. Hopefully people like to watch them. Howdy, howdy. Let's take a Diego 
But he's right in that one second range. So he's trying to get close. But then also uh, having slight issues at, at times. Which then pushes him back ever so slightly. So he's in that like 1.1 second to under a second range. To uh, Emory Anderson right there in front of him. Uh, with the quality, ooh, Emory Anderson uh, off to the side, into the wall. So that's allowed Diego to get P5 out of P6. Uh, to answer the question about the quality, uh, so I seem to have issues. Uh, I don't know if it's just with my upload bandwidth or holding a constant bandwidth or whatever. I have issues uh, streaming with YouTube. So this evening I thought well let's stream in a lower quality uh, and yes I, I agree uh, the the quality of this live stream is uh, quite low uh, and that's only be it's only to try to keep a constant uh, stream running I guess you could say if we stream on twitch I'm able to get twitch at like 720p um, so like not not full 1080 but at least a little bit better than what this is right now um, so that's the only reason for the lower quality uh, for this live stream here on YouTube. Um, but I'll say, even though it's streaming in 480p or 540 or whatever, whatever the highest it'll get right now, it's also recording in 1080p, 60 frames a second. So even if you're watching this and it doesn't look all that great, it'll be uploaded, you know, tonight into tomorrow uh, at a higher resolution, higher quality. Um, you know, to be up there forever. So, so yes, um, I, I do know that the quality is not that great, but that's really just to uh, get it up on YouTube to keep it constant a little bit on YouTube. Because um, I feel like people maybe like to watch on YouTube better than on Twitch. Uh, so that was one reason why I wanted it here. Uh, as you just saw there, Theodore Innsbury, uh sliding around. Which he's what? He's, he's in P2. So now he's about 20 seconds behind the Alupu. In P1. Grammy, I appreciate that. You should have it up on two screens, Grammy, because that. Uh, I was watching the 24 hour of Spa a little bit ago. There's like 15 hours left. Uh, just coming up on the nighttime. So probably after this, I'll probably put it back on and just chill out to that. But I would say, if you can, put it up, put us up on two screens. I mean, I appreciate you watching this. I don't know if this may not be as exciting as the 24-hour uh, race, but uh, hey. Right. Well, so to, to, to answer your que not question, but just to... I know Twitch does record it, um, but for the way that I do it, I guess, is that even though I stream it wherever, um, I record at 1080p, 60 that way then it can just go up to YouTube like in that quality because I've noticed if, if I stream at 720 on Twitch and try to download it like it'll be 720 but it's it won't it'll look a little bit worse um, I don't know if that's just because of how it is on the Twitch servers or how it's downloaded or whatnot so I guess I do double duty with the streams no matter where they are always recording it to a local file here on my system and then upload it to YouTube. That way it's kind of just a, a raw, uh, pristine copy uh, to go up on YouTube to, you know, as a replay or as a, as a place to find everything. Because if we do something on Twitch, um, like I said, it also gets put up on YouTube as a recording. Um, this live stream here will be up on YouTube, but yet then I'll upload another video. Same stuff higher quality to YouTube uh, to be found, you know, later because, you know, we are in the technological age where 4K, 1080p, 60 frames a second, 120, 240, you know what I mean? Everything right now in the, in the technological world is, is supposed to be good. So I do, I do the double duty of streaming and recording and local files and everything else that way then we can put up the best quality that we can um, to YouTube. So, you know, if I, if I was streaming here, if I was streaming this on Twitch, 
right now. I'd be recording and then putting it up on YouTube, you know, tomorrow uh, to be found. That way then all of the North America Race Room videos or streams or races that we capture are all in one spot. Uh, all in good quality, so... That might be a that might be a, a you know like a not the best practice or the best way to do it, but it's just the the best way that I have found to do it because number one I, my my upload while it should be good I've never had uh, I've never had good luck with with streaming I guess you could say my stream my, my bit rate's usually always pretty bad uh, with trying to stream so. You know, I really just try to stream any way possible to get them up there live, re record it, then uh, then throw it up somewhere else. So I got it right that time. And there you go. You're also hearing some other voices, just to kind of cut up my chatter, as well as uh, so the other voices you hear are the folks uh, actually racing in the voice channel within the. Uh, the uh, Discord community, so. Uh, let's see who we are on here. So we're focused here on Theo. Theo Lupu in P1. He has about a 21 second lead on Theodore Innsbury, which had a, had a spin not too long ago. Um, so he's about 22 seconds back there in P2. From P2, you've got Luke Filippone in P3, which is about 35 seconds back uh, from Theodore Innsbury. And we are now down. It seemed like it took forever, but then again, it seemed like it didn't. We are now under 10 minutes to go in the race, which... Uh, what are they running? The last lap for Theodore... Theo Lupu was a 135, so you know, about eight laps maybe. Eight laps to go. Seven or eight, I'd say. Uh, but we'll keep flowing through this. So in P4, you have Matthew Tate, uh, which is about uh, 18, 19 seconds back from P4. Coming around now to the start finish line. Um, back from him, you have uh, Mr. Diego. Um, he is, uh, this is one lap down. I'm sure that's one lap down to Theolupu. Where is the relative timing? Oh, that just shows it for everybody. So Emery Anderson and Diego are one lap down uh, to at least Theolupu. Diego and Emery are somewhat close, about seven seconds from each other in five and six. Um, we unfortunately only have no. Oh, I was wrong. Andy Morehouse is still out there. Um, he was in the pits. I think he was there for a while. He, maybe he was getting some uh, repairs. I thought he was out, so I'm mistaken. He's actually still in there. So we have seven seven people still running out of uh, nine who started. Uh, Eleven ended qualifying, and we had two people uh, unfortunately be disconnected. Uh, I think just the server kicked um, Thomas Cowart and uh, Daniel D. Fenny, DDF. Those two uh, made it through qualifying, but then did not make it to the race uh, due to the server. Uh, so that left us with nine people left racing so there's your one through seven Theo Lupu here is uh, who is it? Diego so Theo Lupu there is now passing P5 uh, putting Diego a lap down so We'll help the system will focus on Theo here for a little bit, so we'll stick with him, maybe for a lap, and then we'll uh, jump around to someone else. Uh, 
yes, I agree. The uh, FR2 uh, sounds amazing. Uh, um, Race Room does a really great job with uh, a lot of the sounds uh, of a lot of, of a lot of the classes. Uh, it's, it's really one thing. Uh, Race Room does really well. It's all the sound of vehicles, so these things do sound quite amazing. So I won't try to talk too much over top of all the sounds. I can even turn the sounds up a little bit if you want. Let's hear a little bit better. side waiting to come back out when possible so he's had a slight a slight spin uh, he's at least going again not going into the pits so that's that's a decent sign that there may not be too much uh, problem or issues because he could have easily uh, did a dive into the pits to uh, have something fixed if there was too much problems um, but he is uh, soldiering on which is great to see uh, still there in P7, but uh, you know if, if he makes it four minutes and 45 seconds, he's uh, he's survived uh, and should get some pretty good uh, points just from the folks that uh, were knocked out of the server via server problems or uh, damage or whatnot. So but he's on his way. He's going. He's moving. It's great to see. I think uh, I think Theo Lupu here has not to uh, jinx him or whatever, or have a commentary curse. I think he's not really had too many problems uh, for this race. Uh, I don't think I've noticed any uh, spins or any uh, any issues with going into the walls or whatnot. He had a pretty uh, pretty tight pit in and out. I think he got all four wheels from what I remember. Um, so. You know, he, he's kept it very clean and uh, certainly kept it on track and has kept what he's you know kept doing what he's needed to do. What do we have here? We have uh, Theodore Innsbury. I think uh, Theodore Innsbury. Yep, he's about twenty-two seconds. Sorry for the uh, long pause there. Uh, he is 22 seconds back to the group in P1. Coming up on uh, a back marker ever so slightly. So we have 
one minute and 40 seconds left in this race. Let's find out where Theo Lupu is. He's coming into, uh, turns eight and nine. The extra long chicane, as I like to refer to it. So he's going to cross the line. And... Um, push this race into one more lap. As he comes across with just under a minute to go, this will be your final lap of the race. This will be lap number 39. So, so, I don't think we followed him around a lap. Let's do it in this last one. Because then we will also be able to catch everyone else. Oh, the commentator curse. I shouldn't have done it. Uh, I think that's been his first little hiccup of the race. Uh, Theodore Innsbury is still only you know, still 10 seconds back. That may prove to be some issues maybe with uh, suspension or, or aerodynamics. Uh, so we have a little bit of drama within the last lap. After one hour, we have drama. So we're going to stick with Theo here to see how he takes this. He may take it just a little bit slower knowing he's still got nine seconds of a gap between uh, himself and Mr. Infrey. He's going to make it ooh, very successfully through 8 and 9. Ooh, looks dangerous from this uh, point of view. He's going to make it down to uh, 10 and 11. He's going to be coming down to turn 12. He's very tight. 90 degree right hander. He took that very good drill. As soon as he's going to beat him in here to turns 13 and 14, so there's no issues here. He will come across the line as your winner. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. And here he comes. Mr. Theolupu, your race winner of 39 laps completed. Here comes your P2, Theodore Innsbury. Across the line. Oh, that was tiring. And let's finish his race. Uh, we will be, let's follow Luke Filippone here. He's about 51 seconds back. And we're going to follow him all the way to the end. ADDF. I was sorry to see that uh, the server kicked you out between qualifying and race. It's uh, I was super unfortunate. Super unfortunate. As we see here, Luke Filippone coming around turn 14 as your P3 coming across the line. Race is finished for Mr. Luke Filippone. Let's move to Matthew Tate. As he comes around, final turn, he's going to be coming in with P4. And Matthew Tate, your P4. Uh, let's see who's out there still. Diego comes across, and there is your entire standings. Theo Lupu, P1 with a... Best lap of a 133.5. Theodore Innsbury, P2, 133.9. Luke Filippone, 134.9. P's 1, 2, and 3, your podium position finishers. Matthew Tate, P4. Uh, Diego, there it went. It's all gone. On to just the end of it. So there's your final. A little bit easier to see, I guess. But uh, Diego, P5. Emory Anderson, P6. Andy Morehouse, P7. Uh, Marcos Romejo, P8. Uh, Genevart, P9. And then, unfortunately, Thomas Cowart, P10. 
P10 and Daniel D. Fenny, DDF, P11. Those two uh, were disconnected between the race. No, sorry, qualifying and the race. So with that, folks, um, an interesting race, I guess you could say, just from the standpoint of, uh, well, finishing, but then also uh, staying clean and not uh, crashing or having any problems. We didn't see too many problems. We saw some spins. Uh, Theo Lupu there on the last lap had a little issue uh, after turn one, maybe too much throttle, got a little bit into the wall, and uh, at least was able to... And so with that, um, you know, thank you for joining. Um, you know, sorry for the uh, lower quality, just from my, uh, my inability to, it seems to live stream at a high quality, um, but it's at least here. Uh, keep an eye out. This will be uploaded to the North America Race Room page uh, in a higher quality, 1080p, 60 frames a second, all that good stuff. Uh, that probably should be up sometime tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, get notifications set up. Uh, find the Twitch channel for the North America Race Room. Um, make sure to follow over there. That way when we have live streams over there, you get notifications for it. Uh, find the Twitter page uh, in Race Room. That is the uh, official Twitter page for the North America Race Room Discord community. Um, DDF, hey, I mean, thank you for being here at the very end. You know, uh, it's a shame of what happened uh, with the server to... Uh, to boot you out like that, you know, for everyone that's here or everyone that watches tomorrow or later this video, check out DDF's uh, content. It's amazing content. Uh, every race that he does, uh, whether it be race room or anything else, he does in VR. He's the man. Uh, he's, he's more of a man than I am on trying to do VR and all this stuff. So check it out. Check out his old stuff. Like it. Subscribe to his channel. Uh, he races with us, or at least he tries to race with us when there's no server problems. Um, other folks from the Australian, New Zealand sim racing community race with us as well. Um, but then he races with them on Tuesday nights, their Tuesday night, our Wednesday mornings or sometime, I don't know, time changes. They throw me off, especially right now. Uh, but check out his stuff. It's, it's mega content, awesome stuff. So, uh, you know, we appreciate him being here right now. We appreciate him trying to race with, race with the guys, this evening didn't quite work out. Uh, that's certainly race room's fault, not his or, or anyone else's. So uh, check it out. Check out our old content. Uh, keep an eye out for uh, stuff coming up tomorrow night. Uh, we'll have a small quote-unquote uh, rookie race. Uh, we'll probably have a stream for that. Monday night, the DTM 95 season championship, round seven at the Falkenberg Motorbana. Keep an eye out for that. That'll be live streamed probably on Twitch, I'd have to assume. Um, so... Find both sides of the streaming world for the North America Race Room. Follow both sides. You'll end up with a live stream at some point. Follow DDF. Um, get his stuff. Get his live streams. Get his old videos. Get all of his tutorials. Everything else. It's all great things. Um, so, you know, with that, what are we... Oh, I don't know how long we've been doing this. About an hour and 40 minutes. We're going to call it a night. Um, everyone... Have a great evening if you're watching this uh, Saturday night. If you're watching this any other time, have a great morning, afternoon, evening. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekday. Have a great whatever. Whenever you're watching this, have a great whatever, whatever you're doing. I'm rambling at this point. Either way, everyone be safe. Everyone have fun. Everyone join up with a community somewhere that does sim racing. Get in with them. Get in with us. If you're on the Australian, New Zealand side, get in with them. Uh, if you're in the European, find find any community you can for sim racing. Get in with them. Get get 
get, get racing basically. Uh, it's great stuff. Um, it's a lot of fun. It always is. Even if you're not that great, it's good to get in with people, learn how to do it, get a little bit better, get awesome at it. Hey, then you're all over the place. So either way, have a great evening, have a great whatever. Um, and just do it. Live in La Vida Loca. That's how I did it last night. That's how we're doing it tonight. Everyone have a great evening, great day, great whatever. We'll see you all next time. Thanks. Love you.